Welcome everybody to Town Hall. Could we uh, all stand for the pledge? Mr. McCarthy? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Supervisor Wareheim. Here. Councilman McCarthy. Here. Councilwoman Nowak. Here. Councilwoman Inzarella. Here. Councilman Lawman. Here. Okay, we'll start sitting as a board of water commissioners. Uh, minutes approval, board of water meeting of May 24th. Number two, increase in transfers from various accounts. And number three, award of bid 18047 for distribution supply material to Team Mina Supply in Ferguson Waterworks. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Graham? Yes. Okay, we convening as town board um, this afternoon. Captain Williams, thank you very much for coming. He's going to give us a uh, rundown on what's going on in the 4th Precinct. Thank you for being here. Thank the town uh, supervisor and all the board members for inviting me back to address the residents of uh, the town of Smithtown. Um, recently, some questions came up. Um, some of the residents wanted me to address the change in the weather and what goes on in the summer, some safety tips. So what I'd like to do, uh, let's start off with uh, pool safety and water safety, okay? Um, this time of the year, unfortunately, Every once in a while, we uh, experience a tragic drowning, whether it be um, a young child or an adult. And um, just some of the things you can do to maybe prevent a drowning if you have a pool, okay? Um, first of all, I think that if you have young children out there, obviously you have to have eyes in the backyard. You have to have somebody out there, okay? Um, you need a gate with a locking mechanism on the, on the uh, entrance. Um, also, a flotation device is a good idea. If you could get a Coast Guard approved uh, flotation device, maybe a life preserver to have back there. Um, one of the things I saw that I thought was interesting on a website I was looking at was um, leaving out toys in the pool area. Yeah, we have a lot of little children, and they see the toys, they want to get to them. So they're going to climb the fence, uh, to get to them, so if you could take those toys out of that area, it um, it'll you'll avoid the temptation for them to go in there. Um, I could tell a quick story about uh, a call I went to many many years ago when I was a young patrolman um, up in North Smithtown. Someone called uh, a child had drowned in the pool or had gone under water. Luckily, when we got there, uh, he had started breathing again. When I spoke to the mother, she said that she was distracted for just a minute, okay? She um, got a phone call. She ran inside to get the phone, and when she came back out, her son was on the ward. Like I said, luckily, that didn't end in tragedy, and we took him to the hospital, and he was okay. But I, I took from that her comments of, I only left for a minute, a very short period of time. That's all it takes, okay? So it's always good, especially if you're having a party and you got a lot of kids, Designate someone to be to watch the lifeguard for, you know, and take shifts or whatever you got to do. If we could do that to avoid a senseless drowning, uh, that would be a wonderful thing. I want to discuss <laughs> illegal fireworks um, with Fourth of July coming up just around the corner. Uh, first of all, fireworks are illegal in the state of New York. Some people don't seem to get that. Um, we take it very seriously. If you happen to see anything or you have any tips, we would appreciate a phone call to the precinct, or you can use the website. I gave it out at the last meeting, scp.4thprecinct at suffolkcountynewyork.gov. You can remain anonymous if you want. Just give us a location. You might see somebody with a lot of fireworks in their garage, or maybe they're selling fireworks. Okay? All fireworks are illegal. That includes sparklers. Okay? Some of the larger fireworks that we see today, which are the... Um, the M80 fireworks, and also the mortars that people shoot up, those are designated as explosives under the general business 
uh, I'm sorry, the New York State labor law. Okay, and um, if you possess that, you're committing a felony. So once again, we take fireworks very seriously. Any tips from the public will be well appreciated. We will enforce the law. Um, recently, up in Kings Park, there was an incident where um, some of the seniors, now that it's graduation time, and prom time, they were playing an innocent game, or what they thought was an innocent game, uh, that they call senior assassin. And I don't know if you read about it, but the way the game is played is uh, each kid who's involved gets a list. They have to shoot another student with a water gun at a certain time. So they'll hide behind trees, they'll go around. This time they took it a little too far and they got vehicles involved. Uh, so they happened to be up in one of the parking lots up there in Kings Park uh, shooting water pistols from the car which was moving. Uh, there was a, uh, a gentleman who was in the parking lot who was a target and um, unfortunately the girl who was driving misjudged where, which way he was going to go and she hit him and he suffered a serious head injury. I'm happy to report he's doing much better but this all leads to distracted driving. Okay, we know we have a lot of young kids out there that um, new licenses, and I don't think they understand the forces involved with uh, the vehicle and when it's moving, the physics involved in that. Okay, so this is a lesson learned. Luckily, again, it wasn't a tragedy. Um, also, to go along with uh, distracted driving, okay? Everybody knows New York State, hands-free. No cell phones, okay? You can speak if you have Bluetooth, but you can't dial hands-free on the cell phones. Um, you, we, will, uh, we will write summonses if you stop for that, okay? Just know that, all right? We take it very seriously, the texting and driving. I've been behind cars that, uh, you know, you think the guy was intoxicated or something, and the, the person is texting and driving. Very, very dangerous. Uh, once again, it's all hands-free in New York, and we will uh, enforce the law as far as that goes. Also, uh, with the summer months, we're going to see a lot more motorcycles out there. Um, be aware, if you're a regular car driver, there's a lot of blind spots. If there's a two-lane road and someone's making a turn, sometimes you can't see past the car that may be next to you, and then you see a motorcycle coming. It's not as obvious as a regular vehicle, and I think a lot of people just you know, make that mistake. They just don't see the motorcycle. Obviously, those who ride motorcycles should be wearing a helmet, okay? They're supposed to operate with a headlight. Um, and those uh, who have a motorcycle are supposed to have a motorcycle license. It's not just a driver's license, okay? You have to have a special license to ride a motorcycle. So <laughs> if you get stopped and you don't have that, you may be issued a summons. So just be aware, and everybody should be aware of motorcycles, and also bicycles are out there now. There's a lot of people riding bicycles nowadays for exercise and, and whatnot. And you got to be aware of, uh, of, of them. We do have some bike lanes, but I mean, there is a lot of traffic out there. So if you could just be a little bit more aware of what's out there, that would help us out. Last month I spoke about school incidents. Um, this has really consumed our plain clothes unit recently. These school incidents where uh, kids are making comments on social media, uh, whether they speak about a gun or shooting or put a picture of a gun on, uh, we have to investigate these incidents and we have to investigate them until the fullest. We need to have an outcome on this, but we can't take a chance of letting somebody uh, slip through the cracks that God forbid might, you know, uh, do an incident where, you know, we have a tragedy. So um, we've been getting inundated with these, at least one a day, sometimes three and four a day. Uh, social media is a big problem with this, so if you can talk to the kids out there in high school, junior high, with their phones, not to post anything that could be construed as a threat, all right? Um, I, like I said, we're spending a, an awful lot of time on these. Uh, I don't know how other to get the information out there that to try and avoid uh, making comments that you know can be construed as dangerous. We had an incident recently in one of the schools uh, where two of the students had smoked what they believed was marijuana. I think it was the synthetic marijuana that's out there. This is also known as a K2 uh, marijuana. 
uh, people do some very crazy things on this substance. So um, basically we went to the school, we had to take this uh, subject, we tried to take him to the hospital. He wound up fighting with the officers. One of our uh, school officers was injured in this, um, in this uh, combative situation. Uh, she's going to be okay, but once again, you know, these drugs out there, very dangerous. Uh, if, if you can get the word out there, it's synthetic marijuana. People might not think that, you know, it's a big deal, but it's pretty serious stuff. So if you can get the word out there to stay away from that, that would be great. Um, recently, we did some raids on vape shops and massage parlors. I know everybody's interested in that. Um, May 4th, they did a massage parlor up in Hop Hog on Motor Parkway. Uh, four people were arrested. Uh, two were charged, all four were charged with unlicensed massage, and uh, two were charged with prostitution. And um, on May 23rd, we did a compliance check on uh, eight vape shop locations in the precinct. Uh, one person was charged from the Terryville Road vape shop up on Smithtown Boulevard, and all the other shops were in compliance. Then again, on May 28th, they did uh, a <coughs> compliance check of 10 more locations, and two more people were charged with unlawfully dealing with a child second degree. Um, happy to say that the first vape shop on the 23rd did comply the second time around, so maybe the message is getting out there to these vape shops for selling these tobacco products to underage children. There was a robbery at a vape shop up in St. James just last week. Um, I have to give credit to the 4th Precinct detectives. After the robbery occurred, the information that they developed, they were able to come up with a suspect in a very short period of time. Uh, they got the information out there. One of our patrol officers was alert, uh, saw the vehicle, went in pursuit of the vehicle. Uh, unfortunately, it got very dangerous for the residents. So. The supervisor had to terminate the pursuit. Luckily, we had a plainclothes officer who picked up the car a little later on. He was able to get behind it, give enough information. We were able to get enough uh, units down there to surround the car. We got the canine units down there and the helicopter up. Second time around, we were able to get the subject, and he was placed under arrest for that robbery. So that was a nice job by the fourth squad. Um, also, uh, there was an arrest. Uh, I spoke about a burglary up on Kings Park Road in Comac. The 4th Precinct detectives were able to develop some information through some evidence, and uh, the subject was identified and arrested. And also another arrest uh, of an assault that occurred in Napatandi's bar up here on Main Street. So they're out there doing the job for you, the detectives and the officers also. Um, crime in the precinct, the stats, uh, all crime is down for the last 30 days. Robberies, assaults, burglaries, commercial and residential, and auto theft. Also, I'm happy to report overdoses are down countywide and as well as in the 4th Precinct, which is good, nice information to hear. Um, there was a burglary up in King's Pla uh, on King Kim Place, I'm sorry, uh, in Smithtown. It was an un unoccupied house, and um, this happens occasionally when we get a house like this. Someone will go in and remove all the copper for like a scrap, uh, and they get the scrap money for that. So if a, a word of uh, advice, if you happen to see or if you have a house nearby you that seems to be unoccupied and you see maybe a work van there and you think it's being renovated, well, it also could be being burglarized. So if you could, don't be afraid. Pick up the phone. Call us. Let one of our officers go down and interview this person and see what they're actually doing in that house, okay? Maybe we can prevent the burglary or get another perpetrator off the street. I'm well aware of all the speeding and stop sign complaints in the precinct, okay? Uh, last, last month I did speak about this. We issued a bunch of summonses up on Midwood Avenue and also here on Jericho Turnpike. Um, the highway patrol sergeant who runs the site team, which goes into precincts and uh, they target these areas. He reported to me that they wrote over 100 summonses in the town last month. So uh, we're well aware of you know some of these locations and please email them in. We'll deal with them as we can. Uh, I can send the highway guys up there too. We get a lot of this. It's not going to be ignored. We do take it seriously. 
Okay. Um, one other thing I'd like to speak about, I talked about this last month also, securing your houses, securing your vehicles. We had an incident uh, recently in the precinct where uh, some narcotics officers were conducting an investigation. Uh, some of the subjects fled on foot, and obviously a foot pursuit involved was involved. One of the subjects ran to the nearest gas station where he found a food truck running at the pumps. The gentleman probably just ran inside to get a cup of coffee or something to drink. But this, this perpetrator was able to jump inside. One of our officers happened to see him and tried to prevent him from stealing this vehicle. He did get dragged by the vehicle and I'm happy to report he wasn't seriously hurt. The guy took off in the truck. We had to pursue him. He did crash the car into an innocent civilian in a car who was hurt, but not seriously. But again, if we just take the keys out of the ignition, we could have avoided this tragedy. Okay, so, you know, if you can get that out there, I know if you run into 7-Eleven or wherever you're going, just secure your vehicle. You know, even if it prevents somebody from jumping in there and stealing something out of it, just lock it. And um, I have a list of upcoming events that I'll go over real quick. King's Park Day, obviously being this Saturday, um, from 8 a.m. to 4. So if you're up in King's Park, go enjoy yourself. Main Street will be closed from Indian Head Road to Pulaski Road from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. On the 23rd, June 23rd, um, up in Rakankama, there's a run around the lake. It juts into a small part of Smithtown up there, but Smithtown Boulevard from Rosevale Avenue to Rakankama Avenue should be closed from 9 a.m. to 11. There's a, we have Smithtown, we have concerts coming up in the summer, there's a concert series. So, um, Smithtown Library Concert Series every Thursday night, beginning July 5th and uh, ending on August 16th, 8 to 10 p.m. There's no road closures on those, but there's going to be heavy traffic up in that area where the library is. Uh, those of you who've been in the town are probably very familiar with that. And this concert also has a concert series up at the gazebo, um, Tuesday nights, beginning July 10th uh, to August 9th. 7 to 10 p.m. Again, no road closures, heavy traffic. Um, St. James Summer Nights, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. June 27th, July 11th, July 25th, and August 8th. Lake Avenue from the railroad tracks to Maple Avenue will be closed up in St. James if you happen to live up there. And um, on July 9th, Kings Park is having Monday on Main from uh, 1,700 hours to 2200 hours, so Main Street will be closed between Indian Head and Pulaski. And uh, I did give all this information to the press secretary over there, and she's going to post it on your website. And I uh, believe that is all I have for now. I wish you all a happy summer, and uh, maybe I guess I'll see you at the next meeting. Captain Williams, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much for your, for your time. I would like to just before we start. Um, also, on behalf of the board, thank our public safety department who works uh, right alongside the 4th Precinct as well. So a lot of these successes come from, uh, from both agencies working together. So uh, I just want that known. Our public safety department does an excellent job. I also want to congratulate Lieutenant Tom Gross. Lieutenant, this is your last board meeting. He's going to retire. Done an excellent job for us in these years. We and we all wish you well, uh, much success and good health in your retirement. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, to the agenda, public hearing, councilor. The town board to consider proposed local law 3-2 2018 amending chapter 248 entitled subdivision of land regarding the retention of experts. Good afternoon, Supervisor, members of the Town Board. I'm Janice Hansen, Assistant Town Attorney. Uh, the purpose of this public hearing is for the Town Board to consider an amendment to Section 248-1.1 uh, of our Town Code. It's adding Section C that will grant the Town Board the sole power and authority to appoint and retain the services of legal counsel and other experts for the purpose of advising the Planning Board. If there are no questions, that concludes the presentation. Anyone wish to be heard on that public hearing? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. 
Um, Just give me your name and address, please. Thanks. Amy Fortunato. I live at 16 Colonial Road here in Smithtown. So um, I'm just concerned about why we would amend, what's the purpose, what's the benefit. I like the autonomy. I like that we have, um, you know, a separation <coughs> of these powers. Um, I think objectivity and fairness are at issue here. I think we could leave this code alone as it is written. Again, I think, um, and I say this too often, a comprehensive master plan in place based on consensus would help with any legal issues that we have, that we face, you know, when there's uh, issues that have, I understand there are legal issues that come up. So, um, but I think a plan in place would also defend the town's position on how we use our land. Thank you. That's, that's being worked on, as you know. Thank you. Thanks. You're Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody on the board? On this public hearing? Yeah. Yes. Patty, please give me your name and address, yeah. just for the record. Thank you. Okay. Patty Stoddard at 400 Gibbs Pond Road in Wisconsin. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, Amy did pose a few questions. Can you answer any of those? Like, what is the purpose of this? What inspired this? What, do you, what are the results we will, we, intended? We will certainly be here after the meeting to answer the questions at the public hearing. What I will state is that uh, these boards being autonomous does not change in any way, shape, or form. This is for the attorneys that represent those boards. The attorneys have no vote on those boards. The attorneys are strictly there to give them legal guidance when they need it. So anything that either the BZA or planning board has been doing in the past, they will continue to be able to do in the future. Okay. All right. I'll talk to you later about it because I good. still have some questions. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Move to close the hearing. Second. Supervisor Warehouse? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Councilwoman Noah? Yes. Councilman Linzarella? Okay. Yes. Councilman Loman? Yes. Correspondence first. A special event for Borella's Farm Stand Fall Festival, September 29th, 30th, October 8th, and all Saturdays in October from 11th until 5. A second reading for the Hop Hop School's Homecoming Parade on October 13th, and the Smithtown High School East Homecoming Parade on September 29th. Third reading for the Nisconsin Chamber of Commerce Festival Day on September 9th and the Kings Park Homecoming Parade on October 6th. Is there anyone in the audience who wish to be heard on these special events? No? Thank you. Advertise for public hearing. The town board to authorize the town clerk to advertise for a public hearing to be held at 2 p.m. on Tuesday, July 17th at Smithtown Town Hall to consider proposed local law 4 dash 2018 amending chapter 135 of the town code entitled dogs and other animals. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Noah? Yes. Councilwoman McCarthy? <coughs> yes. Supervisor Wareham? Yes. Resolutions. The town board to issue a CEQA negative declaration determination in the following matters for reasons stated in a memo on the dates indicated. One. Town Board's own motion to amend Smithtown Town Code Chapter 248, Subdivision of Land, regarding clustering of subdivisions. Two, site plan approval by Todd Feldman for Legends Bar and Grill, located on the northwest corner of Indian Head Road and Meadow Road in Kings Park. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Noah? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Warehouse? Yes. The town board to authorize the town clerk to advertise for the following bids to return on the dates indicated. Bid 18060, purchase of two hydraulic tuck-mounted loading units for the highway department, and bid 18061, rubbish and refuse removal from certain properties deemed to be in violation of the town code. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilman Nizarella? Yes. Councilman Noah? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Warehouse? Yes. The town board to authorize the town clerk to advertise for the following request for proposal to be returned on the dates indicated. RFP 18057, professional services, external annual audit and accounting. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilman Nintarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Warehouse? Yes. The town board to award the following bids and to authorize the purchase of associated goods or services. Bid 18045, a 20-foot boat with trailer for the Recre Recreation Department for to American Marine. An annual service agreement for drainage sump brush clearing tree removal to Reliable Tree Service. And bid 18048 for annual supply agreement for sod to Barbado Nursery. 
Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wareham? Yes. The town board to approve the following. The regular meeting on May 8th, number two, the <coughs> extension of bid 16039, annual supply bid for masonry supply items with state material mason supplies. Three, annual supply for plow blades and cutting edges with Huntington Brake Parts, Camug Supply Corp, Valk Manufacturing Company, and F&M Equipment. Four, assignment of the lease agreement between the town and Propagation Solutions Incorporated for a wireless communication facility at Callahan's Beach to SiteTech Wireless Towers, LLC. Five, extension of bid 16042, annual supply for athletic field paint with Elmont Paint and Wallpaper Incorporated. Extension of RFP 14060, Stenographic Reporting Services for the Board of Zoning Appeals with R.J. Rigobono. Seven, extension of RFP 17038, Stenograph Reporting of Services for the Planning Board with R.J. Rigobono. Eight, establishment of standard work days for Vincent Puglio Town Clerk and Councilman Thomas McCarthy and the reporting of said work days to the New York State and Local Employees Retirement System. Nine, Grant agreement for funds to the New York State Agriculture and Markets to make improvement to the Smithtown Animal Shelter. Ten, agreement between the Town of Smithtown and the Smithtown Administrators Guild for the temporary employment of a part-time assistant director of public safety. Eleven, auction sale of impounded motorcycles. And twelve, fixed asset disposal of old chairs and one table from the highway department. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilman Mizzarella? Yes. Councilman Noah? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Abstain on eight, yes on the rest. And Supervisor Wilhelm? Yes. The Town Board to authorize the Town Clerk to issue the following comments. Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce for their annual Wisconsin Festival Day to be held on Smithtown Boulevard and in Charles P. Tona Park on Sunday, September 9th from 9 until 5. And a parade permit to the Kings Park High School for their annual homecoming parade on Saturday, October 6th. 2018 at 4.30. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilman Mozzarella? Yes. Councilman Noah? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Warren? Yes. The town board to authorize the acceptance of the following. Check in the amount of $300 in lieu of a growth and life bond for the sub subdivision known as JNC and c Scalarin 1111 for the planting of one street, tea, one street tree. Two, Birch Road lot numbers 1521 to 1525 in the amount of $250 to establish an escrow account posted to guarantee the sub submission of a final survey. Three, donation of a bench from Lisa Shelby to the Department of Parks. Four, accept the check donation from William and Kathleen Walsh to the animal shelter in the amount of $50. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilman Manzarella? Yes. Councilman <coughs> Lohman? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? <coughs> yes. Supervisor Lohman? Yes. <coughs> The town board to authorize the controller to execute the following. Number 1 to 10 and 12 are increases in transfers from various accounts. And number 11 is a tuition reimbursement at 100% for Alexis Stern and Horizons in the amount of $1,359 for taking the course assessment in mental health counseling per tuition reimbursement <coughs> guidelines. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilman Nzarella? Yes. Councilman Miller? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wilson? Yes. The town board to authorize the supervisor to execute the following on a form approved by the town attorney. Lease agreement with Jeffrey Gooman for rental of Hoyt Farmhouse from July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019 at a monthly rent of $714.48. A service agreement with Laura Cofaro to provide exercise instruction at the Senior Citizens Department, and three, Uniform Cleaning Service Agreement for CSA employees with Aramac Uniform Services. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilman Manzarella? Yes. Councilman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Warren? Yes. The Town Board to approve settlement in the following matters per the recommendation of the Town Attorney. Anthony Catanese in the amount of $1,108.10. Elisa Garuba in the amount of $5,136.35, and the town attorney to enter into stipulation a settlement in the matter of B. Garofalo Carding Incorporated. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Nzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Waring? Yes. The town board to authorize the release 
of the following. $600 posted to guarantee landscaping for the site known as St. James Park 3rd Division to Gerard Chastine. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Nunzavella? Yes. Councilman, Council, Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Lohman? Yes. The town board to approve the following personnel matters. Number one, four, and eight are seasonal appointments or reappointments to the recreation department. Number two, part-time appointment of Lauren Cunell in the Horizons Department. Three, salary and title and salary change for seasonal appointment Jonathan Folletta in the Department of Parks. Uh, season, number five, seasonal appointments in the Department of Parks. Six, Return from unpaid medical leave of absence for an employee in the Department of Public Safety. Seven, reclassification of Daryl Ciccarelli to the position of Order Mechanic 3 in the Department of Parks. Number nine, full-time appointment of Jillian LaRose to the position of account clerk typist in the Office of the Tax Receiver. And number ten, seasonal reappointment of Haley Doherty to the position of Park Attendant 2 in the Department of Public Safety. Councilman Lohman. Yes. Councilman Mazzarella? Yes. Councilman Noah? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor uh, Yes. We have uh, two site plans sitting as a board of site plan review. Uh, minutes approval of May 8th. Uh, number two, conditionally approve the site plan for Legends Bar and Grill for the legalization of the facade renovation and outdoor dining area. Location on the northwest corner of Indian Head Road and Meadow Road in Kings Park. Number three, conditionally approved site plan for Gatsby Incorporated to legalize the expanded outdoor storage area for BZA case number 1725 at the north south. On the location is north south Jericho Turnpike and west of Cornell Drive in Smithtown. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzavala? Yes. Councilwoman Noah? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor uh, Yes. Uh, reconvening as a town board. Um, we'll move to the public portion. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, the three-minute rule on uh, are for town-related matters only. That will be strictly enforced. Uh, public participation is subject to the rules of decorum. You have all seen this on your speaker cards. As per town code section 76.7, the public portion is for town-related matters only. Any unsubstantiated, unverified, or material false information will be interrupted. So we will adhere to the three-minute rule strictly as a matter of fairness. Um, Owen Jackson. <laughs> Good afternoon, members of the town board and fellow citizens. Um, I'm here <clears throat> because of uh, uh, to remove the leaves in Smithtown, you have to put them in plastic bags. And uh, since they banned plastic bags being used at the supermarkets, unless you pay a nickel for them, in other words, they're discouraging the use of plastic. And the plastic bags they give in a supermarket are very small, flimsy little things, whereas the bags we use for leaves are big, hefty plastic bags that certainly take a lot longer to become uh, disintegrated or biologically uh, part of the atmosphere, the uh, earth. So my, I don't know if this has ever been done before in this town, but I think that they should, uh, like a lot of other communities, instead of the individual citizens putting the leaves in plastic bags, the town should have what I've seen a lot of uh, private uh, landscapers use this is like a giant vacuum cleaner the people rake that they they rake the leaves out to the gutter and this great big truck sucks them up and throws them into it grinds them too so they're compact and then they uh, take it away I know other communities do this but town of Smithtown does not and I would like to know why and that's my message thank you thank you Nancy Featherstone. Nancy Featherstone, Long Beach, Nisquak. Unfinished business. Supervisor Wareham and council members. 
Smithtown beachgoers will be pleased to learn that under Supervisor Wareheim's administration, jurisdictional action has begun to restore coastal access between Long Beach and Short Beach. Currently obstructed with bulkheads and state property within Smithtown's tidal zone, I commend Supervisor, the Board, and Department supporting these moves. However, sand starvation of Long Beach caused by seawalls and bulkheads is the greater threat. If each bulkhead and seawall is denied and eliminated one by one, noticeable reverse of erosion since 1970 to normal accrual will take decades, which makes each wall removal or denial so important now. Four or five rock sea walls DEC misapproved early last year stand immediately west of Long Beach at the toe of 100 foot high sandy bluffs. The five represent 1,400 linear feet of seawall, which will increase erosion of Long Beach and its protective sandbar by increasing current bulkhead sand loss, an additional 280,000 cubic feet a year. All were denied LWRP consistency by the Villages Coastal Commission, with three immediately given variances by Nisquag Village. At a half million each, they were constructed last spring by All Island Excavating, owned by John Savistano of St. James. He went on to construct a fourth seawall at Four Bluff Road, lacking a variance or building permit. Town Beach facilities were used for access, staging equipment and material with additional modifications in December. A seawall variance hearing begin, begun three months ago for, for that property revealed that Mr. Savistano now owns Four Bluffs Drive, having purchased it from the San Diego investor who also owns the last unbuilt wall approval at Five Fox Drive. Previous administration policy ignored the five intermunicipal notices from the Coastal Commission. Resumption of public variance hearings are expected soon. Given my town's protective planning responsibility to stop continued Long Beach erosion, I respectfully ask this administration to comment appropriately on this highly irregular situation while maintaining a respectful relationship with the Sequoia Village. Public hearings held to rubber stamp variances for these damaging structures next to the town beach should include Smithtown asking this to recognize Mrs. that Featherston, they will increase the road. I'm sorry, but your time that's, is up. That's it. The last sentence. Okay. okay, we got it. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Marie Gruick. <clears throat> I'm just here to say two things. Thank you very much for giving us the Gibbs Pond Park. It's very nice. It's done. It's almost finished, complete. What I'm here to ask is I spoke to the Parks Department about donating benches from our civic group, but also from the Boy Scouts in the area, Troop Number 566. We'd like to have permission from the board if that would be okay, since it's okay with the Parks Department. What I would recommend is I'll take that up with Mr. Rico. Okay. He will bring that request to the board, and then there's some legal uh, paths we have to go through with the town attorney's office. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> John Urbantek. Good afternoon, town board. Uh, I want to address a few things. Uh, Mr. Warheim seems to be um, tackling every little task task turning over every stone and rechecking everything in the past um, I've been a critic in the past if everyone knows around here about the animal shelter I think the animal shelter is running exceptionally well right now from what I understand everything across the board a few weeks ago I was gonna go up and I was checked on Main Street by the by the bank and I saw all the curbs are being fixed that I was upset about so it seems like everything is moving well Mr. Loham, I think you're responsible for bringing that police officer here. So you made the connection. That is awesome. Great. I mean, I, I can't be more happier. Um, I wanted to bring one other thing up. Again, I, Mr. Ambrose, I've been in the 
you've put me in the paper a few times, career side in the shelter. Maybe you could write something that Mr. I said. Mr. Vance, I kept Wonderful. address the board. Yes, okay. Um, I didn't bring the agenda up. There was a thing about addressing something about dogs and cats, readjusting a code. I was on page one. I was going to bring up a thing that brought, was brought to my attention. Like, if you have a, if you want a horse, you can have one horse if it's three quarters of an acre or less, and if you have, if you want two horses, you need more than three quarters of an acre. Is that correct? Excuse Something like that, General. One acre. Excuse one me. One per acre. One per acre. Okay. Well, I think we should have something in place for dogs. Um, I don't think a person should have more than maybe like four or six dogs per quarter acre lot, a half acre lot, maybe a little, just a little more. I don't think one person should have 12 or 14 dogs and breed them in our town. I wouldn't want someone like that living next to me with, with 20 dogs on his property. Is that what that thing was with the agenda? On that first page, the resolution that was going to be explored? No. No. Because no. it's something about dogs and cats. Well, no. maybe you guys could re put some type of. I don't think there's no town ordinance in there. Like if a person wants 30 dogs, they can have 30 dogs. I think that's borderline border animal abuse too much. Um, again, I, maybe could, there's lots of things to be explored. The acreage of the person's house. The closeness to the neighbors. I mean, if he's right on top of the neighbors, maybe he should be able to have less, or she should have less, as opposed to someone who maybe has a big piece of parcel down by <coughs> Nezikwar. So I think that should be um, explored for for the whole township. Thank you very much again. The animal shelter is doing great. Mr. Warheim seems to be taking every little nick and cranny of the town and going through everything. Thank you very much. It's also because of this town board as well. Well. The changes from last year to this year, it's, whatever it is, the ingredients of meshing is working great. Compliment to all of you. Thank you. Um, Patty Starr, did you have something no, else? No, no, no. And Amy? Uh, the last person is um, Tom Gross. Good afternoon. Town Attorney Matthew Jakubowski, Town Clerk Vincent Puglio, Councilman Thomas Lohman, Councilwoman Lisa Enzarello, Councilwoman Lynn Nowak, Councilman Thomas McCarthy, Supervisor Edward Wareheim. My name is Tom Gross and I'm currently employed the Town of Smith and assigned as a Park Ranger Division Commanding Officer for the Department of Public Safety under the tutelage and guidance of Chief John Valentine, Department of Director. The reason I stand before you today is after 31 years of service, I will be retiring as of June 29, 2018. Today will officially be my last board meeting I will be attending in my capacity as a Town of Smithtown employee. I would like to take this opportunity to publicly thank this administration for the confidence, support, and guidance you have all shown me over the years. I would, however, be remiss if I didn't acknowledge and thank all the council members who sat on the board before and with you during the last 31 years. I would especially like to thank former Supervisor Patrick R. Vecchio for his dedication, work ethic, leadership, and as I personally experienced in the past few years, his friendship. His stories never got old, and as I leave Smithtown, I will miss him. Over the course of my years as a Town of Smithtown employee, I would like to think I gave the town, its residents, its elected officials, an ethical and honest effort. Even though I love this crazy career, sometimes I wish it was a smoother ride. <laughs> How boring would that have been? But they always say, eventually you only remember the good times. And for that, I am grateful. For there are many, many wonderful good times to remember. Finally, publicly and for the record, I would like to convey my deepest gratitude and heartfelt thanks to John Valentine, Director of Public Safety. Over 31 years, John Valentine started public safety, and I was fortunate enough to be one of the first hires. He has literally taken public safety from a one office, one radio operation, to what is arguably the top public safety, top town public safety department on Long Island, if not the state and beyond. I truly believe if it were not for John Valentine at the helm, I wouldn't be here before you today, and for that matter, 
maybe not even the Department of Public Safety as we know it. So thank you, Chief, for your hard work, your vision, your leadership, your knowledge, and your friendship. First and for when I first stepped up to this podium, with the respect afforded this distinguished board, I addressed all of you by your official titles and full names. On June 29th, for me, I will see those titles, those separations, and those formalities vanish. It is my hope that Matt, Vinny, Tommy, Lisa, Lynn, Tom, and Eddie, we will simply be friends. It has been an honor and a privilege to serve you, the town of Smithtown, the Department of Public Safety, and all its residents. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you, Tom, and congratulations. Uh, Move to close the meeting. Second. <clears throat> Supervisor Weirhorn? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Councilwoman Noah? Yes. Councilwoman Nunzarola? Yes. Councilman Longman? Yes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for attending.